Oliver North's former secretary was addicted to crack. I'm a grateful addict because I lived. Because I would not. So I said, would you like to do this again for all that you learned? No way. Inside Edition on Monday, you saw the first interview with Fawn Hall in seven years. Ms. Hall was, of course, Oliver North's secretary, and she took a lot of heat for her role in the Iran-Contra affair. But we were surprised to hear her say that she thinks North betrayed her. Today, more surprises. Fawn talks about her addiction to crack cocaine, a problem that almost took her life. Nanette Barusha reports. I'm a grateful addict because I lived. Because I would not. Somebody said, would you like to do this again for all that you learned? No way. No way. On April 16, 1993, Fawn Hall married best-selling author Danny Sugarman in a storybook wedding at the Posh Bel Air Hotel in Los Angeles. And like most newlyweds, they were looking forward to a romantic honeymoon. Was the honeymoon as storybook as the wedding was? It, it was a story. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a, an adventure. It was an adventure of a lifetime, a visit to Jim Morrison's grave in Paris, bungee jumping in Phuket, and it was during this visit to Thailand that they visited the infamous Golden Triangle, the opium-producing capital of the world. For Danny, the temptation was too great. I couldn't resist once I was there, and opium was so plentiful, and it was right in front of me and offered to me. I took a few hits. It didn't really even affect me. I think pot in my youth affected me more. Smoking opium may not have affected Fawn, but it rekindled Danny's heroin addiction. He immediately started to score. I was doing what on the street in New York would have been the equivalent of uh, $2,500 worth of drugs a day. Surprisingly, Danny was able to hide his drug use from Fawn until they came home. Danny had switched from scoring pure heroin in Bangkok to buying crack on the streets of L.A. When Fawn found out, she had a shocking reaction. I don't know why, but I, I said, let me try it, you know. At Fawn's insistence, Danny reluctantly gave his wife her first hit of crack. From that moment on, she was hooked, and her first year of marriage became the worst year of her life. Did you ever ask yourself, wait a minute, maybe I shouldn't let her try it because this is addictive? In retrospect, of course I wish I hadn't taken her. Of course I said, no way I'm killing myself. No way I'm going to let you kill yourself, too. I was, yeah, I wish I said that. Do you feel any guilt at this point? Yeah. Yeah. I do. I just wanted to die, you know, and, and it, it was a slow death, you know, and once I started and I couldn't stop, I just wished, you know, God would take me, just like end it all, because I couldn't stop it, I couldn't control it anymore. Her need to get high became so overwhelming that Fawn would slip out of the house at all hours, risking her life for a quick hit. People are on the street corners and all you have to do is say it and they walk over to you and you drop them a few bills and they drop you a few rocks and off you go. The wholesome young woman who just a few years before had given sworn testimony before Congress had become a regular customer in the seediest and most dangerous neighborhoods of Los Angeles. Luckily, she was never harmed, but her addiction began to consume her life. And then I think about, I would think about like going through my brand contra and like being able to testify before Congress and now I couldn't walk up to the front door and answer for the postman, you know? One morning after Fawn had been up for three days straight smoking crack, her parents paid her a surprise visit. They knew that their daughter was in trouble and they wanted to intervene. I locked myself in the bedroom and I refused to come out. And I was just wailing. I was just crying and wailing and just like, I was, it was, I was in a state of shock. They are crying and I was crying and I still couldn't come out of the door. You know, I still couldn't come out of that bedroom because I didn't want them to see me. They never left me. They um, always supported me, even though it was very painful. It was, salvation showed up at our front door and said, you have to do something. Not tomorrow, not next week. By 6 p.m. tonight, you do have to be someplace that can help you. 
They checked into rehab, but it simply didn't work. Within weeks, they were both back at it again. Then one horrible night, Fawn overdosed, and she nearly lost her life. I just say, you know, Jesus, please, please, you know, God, help me so I don't hurt anybody else. I don't care, you know, just don't let me die one, you know. Um, just stop the pain, please, please, please. Danny was eventually able to break his addiction on his own. But after Fun OD'd in July of 1994, she was placed in the Hazelden Clinic in Minnesota. She entered a 30-day recovery program and then committed herself to a halfway house in Florida. She got a job at a bookstore. I loved it. I was making six bucks an hour and I was like happy as a pig in slop. I loved it. Fawn had been in the halfway house for two months when the tabloid press learned of her plight. The relentless media attention made it impossible for her to focus on her recovery. Danny flew down and brought his wife home. The couple is approaching their second wedding anniversary. And despite the rocky road they've traveled in the past, it is the future they're looking forward to. You know, I'd like to have kids, but I don't want to, like, shock me. Oh, my God, that drug addict's going to have kids. Because I am not going to bring anybody into this world that I can't take care of. Danny and Fawn both realize that they have a long way to go, but they also realize how far they've come. Life sure is interesting. Harrowing tale, and Fawn has now been out of rehab for three months and says she's doing well.